So just now let's talk about some of the possibilities. Like, what are the, all of the different ways that you can actually use your mining profits for? Because most people just think, you mine, you earn, you hold, right? Yeah. Whereas there are actually lots of different things you can do with those mining profits. Yeah, um, I think what you need to understand fundamentally is uh, by buying some mining equipment, some GPU mining stuff, it is the Swiss Army knife of the mining world. Okay. The possibilities are as limitless as they can be within crypto. You mm. can kind of do anything, anytime, any place, and that opens up some really interesting possibilities for you. Okay. Um, and hopefully we can talk about some of them and explain them a bit more. So you could just like um, take it on a day by day basis, for example. And what would you do if you were short term thinking? Yeah. So the kind of easiest go to is okay. I have spent this much money on this bit of kit. I want to earn the most money possible per day whilst I have that bit of equipment. As measured in fiat currency. As measured like, in pounds and pounds, right, okay. okay, or dollars, right? So you can do that. You can choose the most profitable coin to mine and you can mine that coin and you can get your best um, dollar per day. That's right. one way to use a machine. No problem with that whatsoever. Okay. A lot of people choose to do that, fine. What about if you were a bit longer term and you thought about holding a coin that may appreciate? Is that another approach? Well, this is it. So sometimes, um, you know, this is kind of uh, old hat saying, isn't there in crypto? You know, buy the, you know, buy the buy the news and then sell the. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buy, buy the rumor, sell the but, news. Yeah, buy the rumor, sell the news. Yeah. So a lot of times, it's it's quite well publicized sometimes that a smaller coin is moving to a new exchange, say for or example, a mainnet or, or a mainnet or some big announcements happening. Sure. So, you know, why not then mine this smaller coin that might not earn you the maximum value that day, not but today, right? you're going to hold a good chunk of it and then see where that rises to after this type of announcement. So you can kind of pre you know, preempt changes that are going to happen in the market, sure. um, which is really interesting way to play the game as well. Okay. So there are these like I call them syndicates, but they're technically known as mining pools, right? Yes. Where you join a, a group of people, you all put your mining power together, and you share the rewards, right? So that's one way of making making consistent money. But is that the only way to do it? Could you do it? Well, this is what's really exciting. So um, it all comes down to horsepower and the, the type of coin you're mining. But if you're buying some you know top end kit and you got quite a bit of you know horses under the bonnet, so to speak, mm -hmm. a lot of hashing power. Um, you can, if you wish, start to look at mining a bit differently. So instead of joining a big mining pool where effectively everyone's working together, one of those lucky members might find the block reward and say, you know, for Bitcoin at the moment, that's 12.5 Bitcoin, just, you know, bang. Or for something like Ravencoin, it's 5,000 tokens created as soon as that block is hit. You know, that's a big chunk of coins of whatever measure, whatever coin you're mining. Everyone works on blocks time and everyone gets that big reward. So in a pool, that's split between all the so members. Even though they win there. the lottery, they don't get to keep it all for themselves. That's right. So they split it between the proportion of power within that group. Right. Now, if you happen to be, you know, got a little bit of power, maybe you've got, you know, one, one machine or a few machines, or you can mine maybe a smaller coin, you can decide to solo mine okay. in your own pool. So it's a little bit more risky because you may not find anything, but when you do, jackpot time. And you can get 5,000, 10,000, you know, whatever the block size of these rewards. And some of the block rewards, you have to remember now, it's not like Bitcoin where they're 10 minutes. Again, Ravencoin, 5,000 coins reward every one minute. And you get to keep them all. You get to keep them all. So that's, you know, there's, there's a lot of kind of opportunity on the table there as well. So that's a higher risk, higher reward higher strategy. Higher risk, higher reward strategy, exactly. Well, depends who you are, I suppose. It depends who you are and depends how you play the game. But that's the point. You can make these choices. Mm, um, it's flexible in that it's way. It's very, very flexible. In the way you run your mining Yeah, business, how you right? play the game is up to you. Mm, it's interesting. This is very interesting. So what about, um, we talked about masternodes earlier on. How yeah. does that relate to mining rewards? So again, masternodes is different ways to um, make the machine do different things. So a lot of smaller coins that are mineable, such as Smart Cash is a good example at the Smart moment, cash, or right. Snow Gem, uh, which are mineable coins where you can mine enough coins to hold a masternode. So you can then put your power to mining lots of those coins while they're somewhat in their infancy, um, knowing that you'll get a long time residual income from mm -hmm. those coins. So not only then do you turn a mining machine into a machine that's passive income every day because it's mining coins, you can have a second passive income within your original passive income by creating coins that then have master node abilities. Right. But you need a certain amount in order to... But you to, need a certain amount in right. able to get there, right? So you could, you could mine them, then stake them. That's then. right. Mine them, stake them, get, <laughs> and get twice mining. as much, and then find something else to mine. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. very interesting indeed. Right. And then I was saying to you earlier on about 
the way I saw this was like, so you're paying your electricity bill with fiat currency, yeah, and it's turning into cryptocurrency, and then once you've got that, you could, you know, spend it and create a diversified investment portfolio or something, and then that led to you talking about what do you call it, the psychology of a the psychology miner. of a miner versus the psychology of a, a trader. trader. Right, tell me about that. So this is quite a fundamental thing. So. If you are a trader, I'm sure a lot of your viewers will have done this, so if you ever open up one of those dummy demo accounts on one of these trading platforms, right? right everybody seems to make millions. They give you a free $10,000. They give you a free $10,000 and everyone seems to do really well because psychologically, you know, it's not real money, right? You just pff, spit some you there, spit some there. Yeah. Any fear, right? You don't care. There's no emotion. Mm. The emotion of it. This is why, statistically speaking, women make better traders than men on the stock markets because they, their brain processes money differently. Them, you know, right? they're, they're just better than the men are. Um, you know, better at men at tons of things and handling money emotionally seems to be one of them. Um, so women do much better than trading. So removing the, uh, the emotion is very important. So, you know, follow the example. So someone comes and say they want to spend, okay, Josh want to spend 10,000 pounds on mining equipment. Okay, here's my money. Cool. So you buy your equipment. Step one, your ass is always covered because you own that gear. So there's a bit of security there, okay? So your risk isn't as much as spending £10,000 on, on, on Bitcoin, for example. Mm -hmm. So you've got some element of risk mitigated anyway. Then you end up having a machine which pays your cryptocurrency every single day. So what happens when you decide to pull the trigger on a trade? You then don't need to put your hand back into your pocket to take out pounds or dollars because the machine has already generated crypto within right. that space. It's not money event with your physical labor, say. So what it ends up becoming and what we found with our customers particularly is they end up doing ferociously well by trading because with their, their psychology with their mining profits because the psychology changes. Instead of putting your hands in your pocket and cash becomes a crypto, crypto becomes more crypto and you end up with effectively kind of free spins at the casino because mm -hmm. if you make a bad trade, you're not too bothered because more's coming tomorrow. Right. And, and that really ends up making you know a lot of our customers make a lot of money you know they make more money than they ever thought possible because their attitude towards trading has changed completely just because they now have machines the farm are willing to take the farm are willing to take the risk they would have otherwise yeah because they did never in a million years throw fifty thousand pounds at the market but they'll happily buy fifty thousand pounds of equipment because they've got the book covered they're getting so much crypto every day and then they'll put a thousand on this crypto or a thousand on that crypto and then because they can be quite bullish with the with the right. trades um, and not worry too much if it doesn't go right because they, they're getting more Tomorrow produced more by, by the, the, the thing yeah um, it's a really you know great way you know it's, it's it's one of those kind of softer examples that people sometimes don't really understand you won't kind of have to witness it to see the effect that's of it that's thinking beyond the day when you get the mining reward that's right usually yeah. that's where you, you think thought process stops but it's like yeah, but then what else is possible yeah so, All these so kinds of things we've out. seen some really interesting behavior with some of our with some of our customers and it's quite interesting to see because it's not something i ever really thought of when right. we got into this i didn't think it would affect that type of things but right. it makes sense right what people do with it they're kind of creative. what people do with it yeah it's up to, up to you so yeah we've seen some really 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 cool things and fun things and um you know, and then of course the kind of final thing you can do is you can move right down the bottom of the table to these brand new coins that have just come out, which are super high risk. But you know, sometimes you can mine. You know, I know I keep banging on about Raven today, but that's what we're mining currently at the moment. I know someone who is mining Raven, and it's very, very. You know, it's only been around two or three months as it is. It's still a fantastic coin to jump on. But when it first came out, and the difficulty was pretty much flatline, people were generating. You know tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of these coins which now even in its infancy is worth a ferocious amount of money you know you could literally get thousands of pounds a week out of mining rigs you know because th that's the way that the if market you've went longer if you've got a slightly right? longer and even then that's longer term view that's three months ago <laughs> you know crypto, yeah, in crypto term. that's a long term right sure. so yeah, there's this high risk there. It might have not gone that way. It could have gone a different way, of course. And you may have to try 10 different coins before you have that success. Very true. But there's so many opportunities there. Again, it's kind of all about buying the right tools for the job. Mm. You know, this is this is a bit of kit or, you know, GPU mining in general. It's just the tools to do the job, um, particularly if you're at the higher end of the spectrum where the cards are so powerful that they can do everything. You've got the ultimate, you know, the, the cards are kind of completely off the table. How you choose to play the game is up to you. So you can go right from just the simplest 
Get the rig. Turn it on. Let it auto mine. Pick the best coin. Pay you in Bitcoin. Don't touch it. Don't again. touch it. Pays you on every one day. End of the scale. Right up to these creative. That's ways right. Of master nodes and trading. Exactly. And all so it stuff. can be as easy or as complicated as you want. And therefore, as you can actually com compound your profitability if you're willing to be more creative, you know, down the road. Like yeah. And the, and the thing is, you can play every single mining rig you have differently. True. So if you That's bought true. if you bought two or three or five or ten, you could play one this way and one that way and one this way and, and you've got you ultimate, know, diversity ultimate diversity. Ultimate diversity. So brilliant. so it's a really really flexible approach. Um, you, you, and you kind of just end up with with a lot of options and options based upon tangibility, mm -hmm. which is different because crypto inherently doesn't have any. Right. So it's it's just a it's a bit different than trading. You know the, you know I love trading. We do a lot of it here. Um, you know because. That's that's where you can you know move and make a lot of crypto, right? right you but can multiply your crypto. multiply your crypto, but fundamentally, you know, my confidence comes from from machines. My customers' confidence comes from machines, and it's nice just to kind of, you know, not have to put your hand in your pocket again. Right. You know, because you're participating in the creation of the coin in the yeah, first place. Yeah, and that's it. And then you kind of have the the other side of it, whereby having equipment like this, you become a torchbearer. Mm. You are carrying the standard of the future. You know, you can kind of get quite passionate about it. I mean, you are. You are voting, you are creating the blockchain, you are processing the transactions, you are upkeeping the power. You know, if, for example, everything was just to stop, you know, when we saw the price crash a few, you know, maybe six weeks ago now, and things were really getting tough, everyone kept asking, you know, is this the bottom of the market? That was everyone's big question. And if you understand kind of mining and you understand the cost price of production, you know, I had a pretty clear understanding that I, I genuinely believe we were at the bottom then. Um, or at least very, very close to, because the cost price of something like Ethereum is around three hundred and fifty, four hundred dollars. You know, I mean, that's how much it costs. Electricity yeah, and electricity, and equipment costs. But you know, so if the price is lower than that, the, you, the machines are in negative money because you're selling your mining profits at a loss, and yeah, that's not sustainable. That's so. not so. People will turn off the machines. They're not doing If it, people right? turn off the machines, then it's game over. You know, the the transactions stop. You know, Bitcoin. You know, if Bitcoin fell below about four and a half thousand dollars, the same thing would happen there. So, there's all these kind of intrinsic production costs that people sometimes at trade. Um, you know, it's different if you're talking about Ripple or Neo that mm -hmm. don't have mineable platforms. But sometimes it's easy to forget that there's a fixed cost in those production. So I, I feel quite confident that we were very close to the bottom, if not the bottom, in those types of price movements because any lower than that, for any period of time, the network will come to a grinding halt. Um, so yeah, so I'm hopefully confident now. Things have started to move a little bit, and, and fingers crossed with consensus happening and lots of other exciting things. You know, 2018 is going to be a great year for crypto. Yeah. Sure. Hi there, guys. This is Chris Coney speaking. Thanks for joining me for this part of the GPU mini series. Stay tuned for the next one.